This is how you add a React Native app to App Circle. First, go to your Build tab and then add a new build profile. From the target operating system, select either iOS or Android based on which one that you're going to build for. Let's just start with iOS and then pick React Native as the target platform. So I'll just give this a name and then hit save. Once your build profile is created, tap it to connect the Git repository. So we support a variety of Git repositories from GitLab, GitHub, Bitbucket, and you can also connect your private repo via SSH, and also you can connect the public repository if you'd like. We also support self-hosted GitLab and self-hosted Bitbucket as well, but my source code is on GitHub, so I will just choose GitHub, and then it will ask me to give access to my GitHub repos. Once I've given access to my repos, I will see a list of repositories in App Circle. Here are a list of repos that I've given access to, and I will choose the React Native one and hit save. And App Circle will show me a list of branches and commits in those branch. I only have a master branch in my repo, but I could have multiple. So I will just make my releases from this branch. And the first thing that I need to do is to actually configure this branch. So I will hit the config button over here. And it will just give me a form which indicates what to build when building this project. So I can just fill out these details manually, but App Circle also has this fetch details button for ease of use. And what this does is that it just checks your repo and fills out the form for you. Once App Circle fills out the form, you can just switch between them. You can use the Xcode project or the Xcode workspace file or enter something else manually. Also for the build scheme as well, if there are multiple build schemes, App Circle will show them for you. But if it cannot, you can just fill out these forms manually. And you can also set commit build status to on, which this will actually put a check mark once the build is complete in your GitHub repo. So there are three more tabs here, one for code signing. This is for Apple certificates and provisioning profiles, which we will have a separate video on it. And we do have a distribution tab, which will indicate whether to distribute this app once it's built successfully to a list of testers via App Circle's distribution module, or send them to TestFlight and Apple App Store. And the fourth tab is for environment variables, which we will have videos for both distribution and environment variables afterwards. So let's go back to config. Everything is configured. And the Xcode version here in the dropdown, as of recording this video, the latest Xcode version was 13.2, and we try to add every new Xcode version within the 24 hours of its release, but you can pick an Xcode version since this is not specified in your repo. Uh, so whatever Xcode version that you want this to build with, you can just pick it from here and everything seems fine. And let's go back and check our workflows. So workflows are actually steps to take while building your app. So it's like a recipe and step-by-step -step instructions for our build agents to run. And we give you two default workflows, one of them for the push events and the other one for the pull request ones. Let's just check these in detail. I will go with the push one. And these are the steps to take while doing your build. So uh, from beginning to the end. So a few things that I really want to mention here is that, for example, if you're using a different node version, unless you don't want the latest one, you have to specify your node version here. And also, by default, we give you an Xcode build script for both for devices and simulator. If you're not going to get any simulator builds, you need to remove this. And in order to remove these steps, modify or add them, you have to tap Edit Workflow button. When you tap this, you can actually remove some of the steps and modify some of them, their order, and also drag and drop new steps to your workflow. So we have a wide variety of workflow steps here, which you can check. But we will have a separate video on workflows, so make sure to check that one as well. So I'll hit save and save my workflow. I think everything is set, and now we can just get a build from our latest commit. Let's just tap build, and it will ask which workflow that I want to use. So I will choose my push workflow and hit save. So in a few seconds, App Circle will start building my project. Let me just show you one more thing. 
other than configurations and workflows, there's a third concept, which is triggers. Triggers is basically what will trigger a build. And if you set your triggers correctly, you will automatically build without ever entering App Circle again. So let's just check the triggers now. We have three types of triggers. One, for every time a push event is happening to any branch, you can define which branches will take these triggers in here. You can add new triggers by tapping the add button there. And you can also define the second one is when a pull request or a merge request is created for some target branch from a source branch. And the third one is whenever a tag is being pushed to any branch. Uh, we will also have a detailed video about triggers. We will give you all the details. You can do wildcard triggers and more. And make sure to check that one as well. So, so now I'm going to go to my build detail and see how my build is going. And in a few minutes, we will have our build completed and ready. So now let's check how to add an Android app. So let's just go back to our build profiles and then add an Android version of the same repo. So from the target operating system, I'm going to choose Android. And for the platform, I'm going to choose React Native. And from here, I will give it a name. and hit save. And I will do the exact same thing that I did on the iOS version. I will tap this, tap GitHub, and then connect my GitHub repo. Now pick React Native from the list again, hit save, and then configure this branch as well, but this time for Android. So we have the same fetch details button here. Let's fetch the details. Now that the app circle has filled in all these details by checking our repository, there's only one module inside and two variants, but we can just, you know, type something manually in here as well. And also in the signing tab, I can upload a key store file to sign this build. And the rest of the tabs are the same as the iOS version. So let's check out our workflows. We give you a default workflow again. And here are the steps that our workflow is taking. This is fine for an Android build, so I'm not going to change anything, but it just works the same as the iOS version. And this is pretty much how you can add a React Native app for both iOS and Android to AppCircle. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.